Hi guys, welcome to the show. Today my guest is a mechanical engineer. He is a avid jiu-jitsu traveler and a BGJ brown belt. Welcome, Chris G. It's time to high five and fizz bump. A jiu-jitsu podcast for the everyday grappler. Let's talk subs. Let's talk positions. Let's talk dominating the mat. Welcome to the Let's Talk Jiu-Jitsu podcast with Raymond Terrence. Raymond Terrence. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks for having me. We literally start off right like that. <laughs> you were waiting for an intro. I was going to say your name and everything. We literally yeah. started off like that. So, BJJ Brown Belt. Yes. Uh, I call you the traveling brown belt. We should, you should probably like start a YouTube <laughs> channel or something like that. Or like the Jiu-Jitsu Traveler. I, I've been thinking of that. Like titles for you. that You kind of like, have it. You kind of have it already, right? Titles, but yeah, there you go. We can talk about it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself and... Like, where, where are your parents from? And yeah, so, I, I don't even know any of that. So Yeah, so let me start from that, actually. Uh, so, actually, I was in, born in Canada. I was born in Sri Lanka. Hmm. Uh, Sri Lankan Tamil, that's my uh, nationality. No, I'm a Canadian national, but to my origins, my ethnicity, I guess, is Sri Lankan Tamil. So, I was born there, came, to, came from Sri Lanka here when I was eight. Then, uh, then pretty much been a Montrealer since then. So Okay. Yeah. And your parents were born over there too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they've been they're born there. So yeah. Okay. You only have your your family like your parents are here now. Do you have any other family that came from there and have moved? Yeah. Here? So basically, uh, uh, there was a civil war, uh, so we had to all run away. So that was. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a civil war. Okay. So I was like three, four. Uh, my dad left earlier. Then uh, my mom and my my brother so I have two brothers so I have uh, mm-hmm. one of the brothers who's an RCMP officer right mm-hmm. now and I have another brother we are 10 years apart he was born here so me and my middle brother uh, we were in Sri Lanka uh, till we were like 8 I was 8 he was 7 and we came here uh, by plane by the way by, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I laughed because you were like we ran here, here. <laughs> here. No, no, no. so the war lasted for like a few years it's, it was finished in 2009 but um uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, we left and my mom had a good job and fortunately we could escape from the villages where we had the, the actual war happening okay. against the Tamils and um, then uh, we fled that area to go into the city area where my mom had a nice job with the government and uh, then we lived there until we got sponsored by my dad. To come here? Yeah. So your dad was already here? Yeah, he left uh, earlier, yeah. Okay, so he bailed. He was like, peace out. I'll try to get you guys here. Yeah, and then yeah he went through a rough time to get here. But yeah, he, he was here before us. Okay. So, I always wondered how that happened. I, mean, I guess somebody has to leave and go mm-hmm. seek asylum or go somewhere where they yeah. can get residence to then be able to bring everybody else. Because if yeah. everyone traveled in a group, there's no way you're... Yeah, but like this, I can get into it. It's this a whole is, process, this is right? This podcast itself, okay. uh, but... Uh, uh, but anyways, overall, the, normally uh, when you apply for refugee status as a as a person from a war and torn country, you get like processed and you get here either uh, uh, through different means. Let's put it there, and <laughs> then you get here. But then for for kids and family members, you you normally get sponsored. So somebody here has to sponsor you. So to sponsor, it's a whole process. You have to show that they have the right income. Uh, it's a complicated process, a lot, lot of expenses uh, related to that. And um, yeah, it's not easy because most of the people sponsoring you are not well off, you know, like it's, right. uh, it's, it's uh, something that they have to work hard for. And that's, I think, something that um, a lot of jiu-jitsu schools do. They sponsor mm. um, black belts from other countries yes. and sponsor them to yes. come here and teach, yes. right? We've yes. had a few. Yeah, um, Kaskong was yeah. here, but yeah, we had a few. But it's, it's a bit... It's a bit more complicated than that because we have to go through a set of medical. Right. So for me to come here, I have to pass medicals. So you can't just be sick and come to Canada. Okay. Right. So I have to, like that's a, they can say no to you. Well, actually, that's the case with my wife. So my mm-hmm. wife's from Argentina. Okay. She still has a lot of family in Argentina, mm-hmm. uh, and they're trying to get. And this has been many years, by mm-hmm. the way. She has a niece that I want to say is around fourteen years old. Yeah. And when she was young, she was crossing the street yeah. and uh, a car hit her and she had to get her leg amputated. Oh, that's, that's sad, yeah. And they won't allow her to come to Canada. Yeah. Still to this day, yeah. because they assume that the amputation yeah. is going to cause, even though this was 
10 years ago, yeah. they think that it will be a medical burden or a burden is. on the... Imagine they let so many people in. Who right. Are, yeah, so I understand their perspective as well, right. but it's, it's uh, yeah. But yeah, now I'm here, I'm pretty much Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more Canadian. Legally, Canadian. legally Canadian, guys. <laughs> no, legally like, Canadian. Quebecois, more than a lot of Québécois. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And you said your brother is in the RCMP, which I didn't know. Yes. Is he, has he ever done any, like, jiu-jitsu or anything? Well, uh... Well, he did self-defense. I, I tell him all the time, like, dude, like, you are an officer of the law, but you don't know what to defend yourself. Like, lifting weights is not going to save you, you know? So <laughs> so I push him to do I kind of put him in contact with our friend in Nova Scotia. Okay. To kind of, like, let's make them regroup in a right, sense right. of training. At least learn the best, like, sequence of, like, scenarios. If you bring somebody to the floor, then what to do next. Right. I think it's very important because a lot of the time... You see in the media and whatnot and you see a lot of people they don't know how to handle conflict right so yeah. like a good part of jiu-jitsu for us it's able to handle conflict situation yeah like being relaxed i have a nice story that happened to me in glasgow when i was traveling i will tell you that but uh, it's the, the 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 steps that you have to take to make sure to see the actions and pr- process it that takes years of practice right you know like you're not gonna react yeah. like you and I would never, never want to get in a street fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? We know what will happen when will that happen, right? Yeah. A lot of the time, these people don't understand martial art they, or they don't do it and they think that they can have the situation under control when they don't do. I tell them, dude, uh, get your, go into a jiu-jitsu school or any martial arts school. And, and just get your blue belt. Get blue belt. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. At least a blue belt. You know, like you, I think that should be a min- bare minimum that every officer should do that. And that's what they keep talking mm. uh, about, especially because there's... Again, I'm about to say I'm talking out of my ass, but you know they're saying that there are more police shootings and or police deaths and yeah. whatnot. Um, now I don't know if that's a fact or not, or it's just because social media is bringing more attention to yeah, it, and it was the same as it was before. Yeah. But that being said, I think the whole idea of bringing grappling, and we have a friend that, yeah. or a few friends yeah, that are bringing that um, Brazil, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu aspect into law enforcement yeah. uh, and offering it to police yeah, officers. They're doing a great job, like uh, Claudio yeah. Corrado and uh, Mitch, right? Yeah. Uh, I love their platform they're creating, they're pushing hard, they're passionate about Jiu Jitsu, martial arts. Yeah. But like you said, it should be mandatory. Oh, it should be. Yeah. It should be something that you you have no choice. You're doing a good job. Be able to put somebody on the ground and not necessarily do like a, a knee on stomach mm. or, or whatever. At least yeah. knowing where to put your limbs where yeah. you're not like, yeah. uh, you know, killing a person, but you're just yeah. subduing them and waiting for help to come, I think is really important. Right, 100%. And the whole art of bringing somebody to the ground, it's... It's something. It's, it's something. You know, like you, you can get yourself hurt. Yeah. And you can really hurt somebody else. Yeah. You see it all the time with uh, white belts trying to do takedowns. Yeah. And they'll do it the wrong way. And they throw somebody and that person falls on their knee. Oh because God, they didn't move their knee the right yeah, day, yeah. the leg the right way. And then all of a sudden they're injured. Just by doing a simple yeah, takedown, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 100%. So, no, that's really interesting. To get back to, um, so how long have you been training Jiu-Jitsu now? Because you're a brown belt. Yeah, so I've been a brown belt uh, not too long. But uh, I've been doing Jiu-Jitsu for over seven years now. Uh, my story with Jiu-Jitsu, maybe I can tell that. Yeah, go for uh, it. So I started with boxing, so I was like 19, 18, and I always wanted to do self-defense. And uh, it, obviously boxing is so accessible. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you see it on TV, you see... You could find a gym almost anywhere, anywhere right? Anywhere, and, yeah. it, and it's uh, it's quite accessible. I find it doesn't require too much uh, too much equipment. So you get gloves, I guess, a mouthpiece, and you're pretty much good to go. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did uh, boxing for a few years, and this is where I met DK. Okay. Yeah. So DK, so we trained at JKS. Uh, this was 10 years ago. Uh, not more, more than 10 years ago. So if you, like 11, yeah, so 10 years ago. And um, I started boxing uh, at JKS. It was a great uh, experience for me. Mm-hmm. And um, and at the time, JKS was in next to Monster Gym. Remember the old Monster Gym? Right. Yeah. yeah. The old Monster Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to go to Monster Gym at JKS at the same time, almost, right? So... Uh, it's yeah. funny because I trained there yeah. at the exact same time. That's yeah, crazy. We probably crossed paths yeah. at some moment in time. Boxing? I did what they call their MMA, MMA program. MMA program that right? JK is the street or something. Like that. Streetwise, Streetwise or something. Yeah. And they yeah. really emphasized that it was really like MMA. And yeah. that's what attracted me there. I was like, I yeah. saw MMA. I was like, yeah, okay, let's good. give it a try. Yeah. And I only went there because I had a, or I have, my wife's cousin was there every single day. Um, um, his name is Nick. He's a very yeah. big, 
yeah, Greek guy, uh, and uh, he was training there all the time. So I went there. I did a class. I just ended up happening on a day where it was jujitsu. Oh yeah, uh, which was obviously no gi, and it was interesting. But they were very much on a. It was more self defense, I would yes. say, than anything else. But they were just starting off, I think, in that like the transition from self defense to MMA. Mm. So I think they were still trying to figure it out too. Yeah. But the guy the that was... used to be affiliated with BTT before. Okay. So, so the way it was working, so we had the BTT curriculum at JKS. I didn't know that. Yeah, so uh, the story is like, I did boxing for a year and a half or whatnot, uh, but I was, anyways, I was in an internship, I was a student back then, and I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm not, I'm done with school in terms of like homeworks and whatnot, so I'm like, I'm going to dedicate my afternoon and whatnot to train martial arts or okay. boxing. So I started boxing like five times a week. You know, like, uh, and I start to weight lifting. That's when I start to lift weight a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, so, anyways, boxing goes was fun and all. But then, so I'm like, I see these guys rolling on the ground. Everybody does this. We see guys on the rolling ground. Well, what are they doing? It's like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't look very uh, appealing. Appealing, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look appealing. Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't look very nice, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, one day I will try. It. So JK, uh, so sorry, DK used to also do boxing. Brian Sim. Right. This is a box. So they used to kick my ass in boxing, right? So then I'm like, well, okay, let me bring it uh, to the... Let me try jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. So this was Gi, and it was affiliated with uh, BTT. So BTT used to send Neil. It was a black belt okay. now. Mm -hmm. Neil used to be a brown belt back okay. then. So Neil used to come to class, like, you know, like big guy, was strong, and he was like, teach jiu-jitsu. And um, that's how I got started. That's then, um, uh, then Neil will not sometimes show, DK will run the class. Okay. DK was so, no, DK yeah, is yeah, super small. intense. But no, but super intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's not a big guy either. Yeah, right? but like, yeah. DK beat the shit out of me, of course. Yeah. But like, uh, DK will like teach me like, oh, this is how you do the drills. And we'll do like one-on-one -on -one <laughs> drills day with DK. You know how DK is intense. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, a, I'm wearing my white belt. I had like those judo geese. Okay. You know those judo geese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That don't fit you. Right, and yeah. they're super thick I still too, have right? They're yeah. super thick. I was, I, oh my God. White belt, I look like, uh, anyways, it was, wasn't a very good appealing look. At least the BTT keys are a bit more fit, fitted to your body. Right? right. So that's how I got started with Jiu-Jitsu. I got, I got two months of training there. Then the JKS decided to close down and mm -hmm. uh, they decided the entire process of moving. Since then, I lost connection uh, with uh, Jiu-Jitsu, boxing, and I stopped for a while because I was doing my bachelor's at, mm -hmm. uh, at uh, McGill for my bachelor's in electrical engineering. Okay. And um, I did that. I didn't have time to do jiu-jitsu, or I didn't have the money to do jiu-jitsu. <laughs> right, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I stuck to stick to um, uh, lifting weights, which is easy to do, mm -hmm. and um, that's it. Then one day I saw Diki in the. He was going to Concordia, and mm -hmm. he was doing his bachelor's in a computer, a software engineering. So I see him at uh, in the train, you know, the train demo tank train. Right, right, right. Everybody uses it now because we all work from home. Yeah. And uh, I see him at the train station, Gare Central. And um, and I jump him like I'm like DK, you know me a bit. So mm. DK just turns around with me and goes karate set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, don't beat me up. <laughs> don't beat me up. And um, uh, then uh, we start talking. He's like, yeah, yeah. There's a gym, uh, BTT. You know, you should go try. This is when DK like was like super intense into jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. Training at BTT like almost full time. I think it was a purple belt back then. And um, he told me, yeah, there's a gym and. Uh, there's a gym at uh, HQ, HQ, which is in St. Catherine. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be working in downtown because I was graduating by this time. Okay, I'm going to be working downtown. And okay, let me check it out. So then I Google BTT. Then I see um, HQ. I'm like, okay, let me sign up. But then I find out it's a BTT in West Allen. Mm. Fred's old place. Remember right. their old place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I'm like, okay. Then I walk into Fred's gym and I sign up the first day. I'm like... Here you go. Ten I'm in. Take ten my years, money. Ten year membership. <laughs> <laughs> Not a year membership. Ten year membership. You know, Fred probably thought it's another brown guy I can take money out of, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, then I, in my head it was like signed up for life, you know. And then you were all in. So, yeah, well, I was all in from uh, like I told myself when I graduate, this is what I want to do. I want to buy a snowboard and I want to sign up a jujitsu membership. Right. And I bought a snowboard and I bought a jiu-jitsu membership. Nice. And you've been snowboarding ever since, right? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, like, yeah. Then Fred made me quit snowboarding. Yeah. Like, pretty much. He made me quit all the sports. He made me quit soccer. He made me quit golf. Wow. He made me quit like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to do jiu-jitsu three times a week. You know, you know, I have, I have spot hockey. I have soccer. I have this. Yeah. Slowly but surely, when I got my blue belt, I only did jiu-jitsu. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And when you started doing, what was your... 
I want to say what was your game, but like, what what were the things that you enjoyed doing the most when you were at jiu-jitsu? Like, were you more yeah. like I was just gonna pull guard, or were yeah. you more like you always wanted to be on top? Or? So we uh, well, we had we were lucky enough to have Cascon here, like one of the world's champion, and uh, you know his caliber of level is beyond anything that we know in North America. Mm-hmm. So he was here. So uh, so I got a lot of uh, coaching from Cascon and Mark in, as a as a white belt. So a lot of my game evolved around their game. So it was a lot of half guard. So mm. I started playing half guard a lot and was oriented towards sweep. So half guard, sweep, top, past the half guard, uh, top, bottom top, uh, past the top half guard and uh, to side control and, um, and uh, take the back or whatnot, right? right. Uh, when the guy tried to roll over to uh, turtle. That was my game uh, for a long time. Uh, a lot of uh, Mark Semery, uh, Brianna Semery's father is game was implemented into me as a white belt and um, so a lot of shoulder pressure yes a lot of cross face so mm-hmm. that was from Mark Samari a lot of sweep from Cascal's influence then th- towards my end of blue this is when Fabio I used to train a lot with Fabio so when I used to work in downtown so Fabio started to jar head uh, everybody knows Fabio so I don't need to introduce him Fabio Holanda yeah, yeah. Well, Fabio Holanda so um, so he his game started to stick with me a, a lot more because I used to train with a lot of guys in HQ and I started to do wrestling with Tim. Mm-hmm. I started to do wrestling with Tim, uh, jiu-jitsu with Fabio, and I'll only come weekends at uh, West Allen. And, uh, How many times a week were you doing wrestling? Man, back then, man, when I was 25, I used to train uh, Muay Thai with Sam Gye. Mm-hmm. Sam Gye is an amazing coach, one of the best Muay Thai coaches, one of the best striking coaches I ever had. It's amazing. Okay. He's amazing. Uh, Sam Gye used to take, uh, teach us striking uh, three times a week back then. Uh, it was kickboxing at the beginning. And uh, then it was wrestling with Tim three times a week or twice a week. So I will do, it was insane. I will do uh, t- days will be either striking uh, jiu-jitsu right after. We'll be right back to back. Either wrestling jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I did that for like a year or two. But my game it skyrocketed. Like striking game increased. Uh, my, my control game, my pressure game with Tim because Tim will do a lot of situational sparring in the wrestling will okay. be like single leg takedowns you have a single leg you have to take down or you have to do parter okay and if anybody did wrestling it's another level yeah. wrestling is like cardio wise like three minutes of going against brock or any of those big guys just that, non-stop oh, it's there's no break there's no break right, right. it's insane so yes yeah, so i did tim was a great foundation as well so then towards my purple that's when fred got in so fred really fred is our uh, head coach in west Allen. And Fred really shaped my game to be much more uh, refined and safe on my body parts. Okay. Like, you know, hygiene, playing half guard in a way that is safe for the net. Did you find you were getting injured a lot when you were wrestling yes. more? So that's it. My Because my... we've recently had this conversation mm-hmm. through our, in, a, in a big group chat that we have about wrestling and yes. benefits of wrestling and jiu-jitsu. But that risk of injury, is it higher in wrestling than if you mm-hmm. were just strictly focusing on jiu-jitsu and then... If there is a higher risk of injury, is it even is it worth yeah. that that extra risk based on the benefits that you're going to get out of it yeah. for jujitsu? So let's put this in context, okay? So yeah. just to put put it out there, like I'm not in like a, I competed, but I'm not an active competitor. I'm not to the level where I'm competing every 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 month like Claudio does. Yeah. Uh, I do this for a hobby. I love it because it allows me to stay in a physical physical shape, and I'm like a nine to fiver, so I'm a normal. Uh, Guy that has a you're the everyday guy, player. Everyday, everyday Funny everyday how player. That's, yeah, that's, that's exactly. That thing, yeah. So I'm a guy that works at five. I have a career that is like uh, that is we can get into with my travel history, with work and the jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, most of it, it's I do this after work. Right. You know what I mean. But you need to be physically okay to actually go to work. Exactly. Right. So so going back to the injuries, what happens is like you, I was doing this with guys who do MMA full time. I was doing this with guys who do jiu-jitsu full-time. Were you in school when you were doing this, or no, did you start your career? I started at work. Okay. So I started work, so I'll get my ass beat up because you're a white belt. All you do is get beat up. Right. And uh, you do this with people who do this for a living or pretty much planning on doing time. this for a living, right. and they train twice a week, and mm. and they that's all they do, right? right. And uh, uh, injuries were coming, and one of my biggest injuries was actually from wrestling. So a lot of my knee injuries... And my shoulder injuries, were, which took years to heal, were all from wrestling. Rarely from jiu-jitsu. Hmm. Like, I, rarely from jiu-jitsu. Like, jiu-jitsu injuries will be, like, very my fault. 
Right. You know, like things that I don't tap fast enough because somebody has an arm bar or somebody gets my neck and I'm not tapping fast enough. And it's, I can blame most of my just injury on me, but wrestling injury, it's, it's you're doing it, you're doing, you're falling into your knees. A lot of, a lot of your knee gets, your knees gets a beating, your ribs get a beating. So you go against a guy who's bigger than you and he takes you and throws you, he falls on your head. So wrestling is not an easy sport for young, and that's where the debate comes in. Like you know, like is it a young man sport? You know, it's it's a, it's a very yeah. young. In my opinion, well, again, it doesn't really matter, but it's a, for a guy who does a nine to five job, uh, who's like a, has a career focused lifestyle. And um, who's very sedentary in a normal life. Mm. It's wrestling for me versus jiu-jitsu. I'll pick jiu-jitsu all day. If you're going to concentrate, if you if you have three hours a week, your 100%. wife lets you out for three hours a week yeah. or your girlfriend or boyfriend yeah. or whoever, and you have those three hours and you have to pick and concentrate those three hours somewhere. Yeah, 100%. And you have a school that offers jiu-jitsu, they offer wrestling, they offer judo, they offer gi, they offer no gi, you got kickboxing, you got Muay Thai. And eventually, you got to figure out. Yeah. I need to put those three hours in something that optimal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you can't spread yourself too thin. And also, that's when you got injured. I trained a lot, and I get injured. Of course, like uh, your mid twenties, you're like you have the energy and the dedication. When you put your mind into it, you can do all this, right? So yeah. I trained like seven times a week. You know, so it's jiu jitsu, uh, kickboxing, uh, wrestling, plus uh, weightlifting. Did you find? And again. When you're doing so many things, you're doing a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. it's really hard to see one that's thing skyrocket, point. right? So that's an advice that uh, Chris Davis gave me and so when, it was, when it was a purple belt and he used to see me like go at it. I used to strike uh, with Sam and I would come to the judge, <laughs> but then I'm like we'll go at it, like spar like crazy and like... And then you're to, just, you're a little tired. Like, just so I'm dead exhausted, you know, mm-hmm. like, then I'm like, I don't know, like, did it help my game with jiu-jitsu? But I, I, I can tell you this, I can tell you that when I dedicated myself fully in purple belt, that I can only focus a lot on jiu-jitsu and stop Muay Thai and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. This is jiu-jitsu. I can tell you my game skyrocketed, 100%. Uh, because I could focus anything in life, right? You focus, dedicate your time to one art, you're going to get better. Yeah. But do I miss striking? Of course. Do I miss wrestling? Of course. But now I'm at a... Uh, I'm Priorities in, change. Try to change. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, in my early, I'm in my early 30s. Like, I want to do jiu-jitsu until I'm 55, like, without crazy injuries, you know? Yeah. And or like, then even do further if I can. You know, look at Mark. You know, it's yeah. the best example. So what do I have to do in the next few years to get to that level? Yeah, you know? and still be physically still be okay. Physically, still be right, able right. to roll with the 20-year-old that walks into the gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? For, right. Like, we have examples of guys in their 40s right now that we we see every day. They're doing it. You know, yeah. they're great role models for us, you know. Yeah. And for me, that's what I want to get to, you know. Like, it's yes, I would love to go back to do Muay Thai and striking, but then... Dude, I don't want to go to work with a blue eye, you know, yeah. or black eye. Uh, I don't. Want, I don't want to go to work with a broken toe. I don't want to go to work with a hurt knee. I, I have to go to a customer meeting. How do I do that? Yeah. You know, like yeah, but yeah. I, I would say I recently changed my mentality a little bit. Like, um, you know, there's been a few people that have said, you know, if you want to go long term, you have to pick your roles. Like, you have to be able to know okay well i can go two roles and i'm going to go all out yeah. but then afterwards if i have two more you know what maybe I'll, I'll be strategic in the people that i'm picking i would say i'm more recently yeah, been doing and, that and when we rolled together two rates different game when i used to be a blue belt and used to be a purple belt, completely our, our it was a war yeah, yeah, like, yeah we used yeah, to beat yeah, the yeah. shit out of us yeah and now when we roll it's much more calculated and yeah. and we're working towards today was the best example today when i was rolling at lunch and i told karate i'm like bro like uh, let's work on this and first of all, he's putting in a situation where he needs to improve. I'm putting myself in a situation that I'm, I need to improve. Yeah. So we were playing open guard, right? Yeah. He was playing open guard. I was trying to pass open guard. And uh, and I'm like rolling in consequence of that. Yeah. I feel like that's much of a strategic training blah, or a, a regimen for, for, for us. Because yeah. Corrado's injured. We all are injured in yeah. some ways. So it allows us to grow our game faster in a way. If I go like 100% all the time and I do the same thing all the time, my overall jiu-jitsu game, I don't think it's going to improve. It's not going to get better, yeah. and you'll probably spend more time off of that injured, and you won't be exactly. able to train. And I don't have the luxury of training like every day of the week. Exactly. You know, so like I have to pick my role, and I have to pick the type of roles I do. Yeah, Karado, I find is really interesting. Who's one of our black belts? He, um, um, he'll purposely, he can get on with his wrestling background. He can take anyone down. He's so big and strong, he'll get on top and sub you. But he'll purposely, after he's done that once, he'll sit down and he'll pull a calf yeah, guard. 100%. 100%. You know what I mean? He'll, he knows. Like he's, 
I can get on top of this guy and crush yeah. him all day long. But he, yeah. is he really learning anything from yeah. me doing that? No, yeah. And the fact that he knows that, I mean, it shows his character too, right? Yeah, that switched my when my late purple. I think Fred probably gave me a speech, and Chris Davis gives me a speech. Whatever, like you need to learn to lose in your roles. Yeah, like you cannot win every role. If you, like how many roles I can lose in a year to be able to improve my jujitsu game in a year? Yeah, right. So if I win all my roles in a year, so let's say I win ninety percent of my roles in a year. So my game might be very unique. Like my hard hard guy will be amazing, yeah. right? Then, but if I if I lose fifty percent of my roles, but I'm improving my guard game, I'm right. improving my sub games, but I'm losing because I'm trying stuff on some uh, higher belts or lower. Right. But I'm I'm learning, right? So at the end of the year, what is better? What's you know, better? Like, yeah. so that's how I, that's how I look at it now. Yeah. Like I'm gonna level like fuck. I don't want to be a shitty black belt who cannot play guard. Yeah. Yeah, I was having that conversation with another one of our black belts. He was saying, uh, um, he was like, hey, I'm trying to work on, on butterfly. He's like, I don't know anything. You know, like I know the basics of butterfly, but I'm not a butterfly type of guy, mm -hmm. right? If I had to teach it, I could teach it, but I'm, I'm not that guy. But I find I'm putting myself in that position all the time. And I'm trying to figure out, you That's know, right. how to get better in this and that. And we were saying, well, you're, you probably know this, but you're, probably going to get past a thousand 100%. times before you start learning a little bit more about butterfly right but you got to put your you got you got to be willing to put yourself through that and a lot of a lot of people doesn't matter what level a lot of people are scared of letting that happen i and i'm seeing it now as a black belt that i see the higher belts hesitate to do that because they feel like i'm a higher belt i'm i got to I'm gotta win all my roles yeah. and i have to earn like I just got a black belt or, or I yeah. just got a brown belt. Now's not the time Dude. to show people that they can pass my guard or they could sub me or this and that. But you, 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 if you want to grow, like you, that's, that's, it's just going to happen anyways. Yeah, but you for me, I mean? like, uh, like, if you pass my guard, it's great. But then now you have, what are you going to do from there? What are you going to do there? So yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, so I play butterfly, you pass my guard. I yeah. suck at butterfly, whatever. You pass my guard. Yeah. And then now you have to get on a better position. Yeah. So you can hold me down there for like an hour. But like, I know that with my technique, I can re get my half card. Exactly, because eventually I have to do something. Yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah. That's, so that's it, right? So I can pass, yeah. But then I re gain my half card. Then do, I you, can... do you find you have that that mentality as a brown belt now, of like I don't I, I don't want to lose to a choke or I don't want to give things up knowing that my black is coming and I need to show that I'm this. Do you have that in your? head? I don't think all? about it like that now. I'm really focused on really improving my overall game. Because for a long time, I really focused, uh, all I was doing is half guard. Yes, my half guard and my mount, my mount got really better because of mm -hmm. injury. So I got wrist locked and, and right. then broke my wrist, took eight months to heal. And my mount got better from that because I was only be able to be in a position where I used to train with a broken wrist, be, get, a, get on mount. And I could only put a cross face, then choke the person. Right. So I got to, I got to, the, to a point where I just want to have... I don't want to be known as the guy that has a good half guard and a good mount. You know what I mean? I want yeah. to be able to do arm bar triangles and yeah. whatnot. Right? If I have a question about this, I could go see him and, yeah. and he'll give me an answer. Yeah, but yeah. also I want to be able to sub a black belt or a blonde belt or a with, blue belt. With multiple with, things. With, uh, with an arm bar or with, yeah. uh, with a triangle. You know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's submissions that, like no, the, the number one position in jiu-jitsu that we all know, like I'm not a jiu-jitsu expert here, but like it's guard. You yeah. know, we... Guard is a very important position, and I think it's important that everybody who practices jiu-jitsu understands the concept of guard and is able to maintain a person at his will mm -hmm. in guard. Yet, you barely ever see anyone pull guard. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. It, I think yeah. there's a... Um, someone was... I don't remember who was describing this, but someone was describing jiu-jitsu like a, like a cycle, right? Like, you'll have, a, you'll have a fad that everyone's doing something... Right, yeah. and then that something will dip, and then something will come. Yeah, but then it'll rotate back. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. it's an ever, mm. it's an evolution that's kind of like ever turning. Yeah. So you know, if the guard was good ten years ago, then yeah. we went through leg locks, we went for this yeah. and that, and then it's gonna so pop it's back up. You know yeah. what I mean? And guard is a, it's a good position to be. You know, like uh, like you can rest. <laughs> yeah, you can rest. Yeah, like you can pick your roles. You can work on stuff. Uh, yeah. Tell people about that wrist lock. Um, yeah, just because I think it's. Yeah, it, every, yeah. everyone's fear is the wrist lock yeah. but I think a lot of people don't recognize that yeah, it's there perfect. also yeah. so, so we're rolling at, uh, against a black belt and um, 
and um, well, he got I got a position in the in the collar. You were in his guard. Yeah, so I stood up, but I stood up, but my collar position was uh, not too. I have to put it a bit higher. You know, it wasn't here in the chest, mm -hmm. so it was very fast. So I stood up, and as I stood up, he took the uh, the uh, my elbow and he wrist locked me, but. I fell at the same time. So, so like he crunched yes. in yeah. and you collapsed forward yeah. at the same time. So, bro, it was, it wasn't swollen, but it was a fracture here. Okay. And uh, honestly, it took me eight months to get back. Eight months. Yeah. I used to only do, I couldn't lift weights properly. Uh, or I would do only like, I'll do one hand push up on one hand or I would do wrist push up. So okay. I can put pressure here. Right. Wrist side push up. Uh, I couldn't do bicep curls. Uh, pretty much, uh, I could do flyers. So some workouts, of course, I never stopped training. Right. So that's again like maintaining a work work lifestyle plus injury plus uh, work, maintaining jujitsu. I never I didn't stop training jujitsu. I used to roll with one hand tied in, and uh, yeah, and kept my gym routine. Hmm. Yeah. And did you? Now when people go for wrist locks, you you yeah. like run away. <laughs> yeah, it's a position. You learn from an injury, man. You learn right. so much from an injury. And uh, uh, one of the things that I position my arm properly, but now no, I see it coming too. Like I'm in a, I'm in a, my skill level has increased a bit enough to like position my hand in the right place. In the right you know? place. And if, even if I get wrist lock, I, I tap right away. Like, you yeah. Know? And uh, well, Fabio goes for a lot of wrist locks, but Fabio controls it so <laughs> right, right, right. so Fabio is very good at uh, controlling the wrist line. yeah I think um, I think it's a good lesson for um, lower belts to yeah. know that wrist locks are real oh and like goodness. they're horrible when they yeah. do happen and it happens so fast that like most of the time you don't even see it coming yeah but right. like I know there's a lot of taboo around wrist locks but I think wrist lock is a good transition position to something else yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so like I like to like I like to get the wrist lock when I'm playing guard but I don't finish a wrist lock. I turn in the wrist lock. To, so I, they defend it, so then yeah, you can I'm move it to go to the back, you know? So it's like, like I, I get a weird grip like this, then wrist lock his uh, or her arm, uh, her wrist, mm. and I pull arm and I go to the back. It's a nice, nice setup position. They get scared, or they, if they pull back, you know, you can get the underhook back or whatnot, right? So yeah, yeah. I use it like that, but I know we have great wrist lockers at PTT, so we have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. Gonna pause you here. Yeah. We're gonna do uh, a little quick message from our sponsor. Power For All is a Montreal-based company that sells nothing but the best when it comes to supplements and products. Delicious protein bars with 21 grams of protein using honey as sweetener and top quality whey protein. They have an amazing protein shake powder that has 27 grams of protein per scoop, one gram of carbs and just one gram of fat. Maybe you're looking for creatine monohydrate, which I personally take daily, they've got you covered. Made in a Canadian laboratory and Health Canada inspected, you are getting the highest quality products, all based here in Montreal, Canada, at an amazing and affordable price. Guess what? It's all delivered to your front door. Go visit them at powerforall.com today. Yeah. Tell me about your travels. Um, you're the, one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on here too, yeah. apart from you being great at jiu-jitsu, was the fact that you travel a lot and yeah. you've been to many gyms all across the world. So maybe tell us a little bit about where yeah. you've been and what you've seen. And so let me start with my career. So I think everyday grappler, most of the time, we pay the bills. Right, right. right. Someone <laughs> so has to pay the bills. Someone has to pay, so my job pays the bills. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have a background in electrical engineering. I uh, did a bachelor's in it. Uh, graduated to, in 2015. So when I graduated in 2015, I always wanted to have a job where I could travel the world. And like I did, first of all, when I came from Sri Lanka back whenever, 2000, I never left. I never traveled anywhere. When you were over there? No, here. Oh, you came here? Yeah, I never okay. traveled anywhere. Think about it. For 20 years, I didn't travel anywhere. So I was eight. Well, sorry, 15 years, I didn't travel anywhere. Mm. So for 15 years, I never took a plane. I never crossed the border. You were just here. I was just in Canada. And, uh, well, yeah, anyways, I went to Toronto. Uh, right. Yeah, well, every, every brown people went to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, anyways, uh, so, so I never traveled. So I went to the job where I could travel. Mm. Uh, so I applied. Um, I, well, I got actually called in uh from my recruiter because I did a tech fair event at McGill. Anyways, I got the job where 25% of my time I traveled. So funny enough, I started jiu-jitsu as a white belt while I started my company, uh, while I worked at that company. Okay. So my jiu-jitsu game and my career, they both evolved together. At the same time. So I've been, or... been doing jiu-jitsu for seven plus years at BTT and I've been at that company for seven plus years. Wow. So every, let's say promotion, every, like high skill level, you know, like in career wise, you will grow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every little growth in career was 
It was it's crazy, man. It was everything was like insane. Insane. With each other, right? so if I get a promotion at work, I'll get a promotion. <laughs> 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 it was it was it was funny though. So yeah. So, my so coach, basically, what you're saying, you got a uh, promotion at work every three years. Yes, right? like, right. uh, pretty much. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> so so basically, it was very very uh, synced in. So my career and my jujitsu life are intermingled to another level. Hmm. So. I got to travel 25% of the time as a field engineer. So I had to do field engineer work. So I'll go to customer site, do training, commissioning, fix yourself. We, okay. we sell, we're in the business of selling simulators mm-hmm. for like power system grid, not another podcast, but anyway, okay. <laughs> so I can get on. That's my expertise actually. I'm a black belt at that. Okay. Uh, but um, uh, so yeah, so we go to customer side and we commission those stuff. So it's a multi-million dollar systems and it's a lot of work. But sometimes when I was a field engineer, I used to go there for a minimum a week. So you go to a city for a week, uh, like I've been to a city called Lubbock, Texas. Have you heard of it? No. It's nowhere in Texas where there's civilization, but you will find brown people. Okay. Everybody is <laughs> in school, you'll find brown person. Do your PhD, try to get their visa or something. <laughs> so, so anyways, uh, so we, uh, I go to these cities out of nowhere. I don't go to, I go to New York and whatnot, but like most of the big cities in the States, probably been to a lot of, a lot of cities in the States. I don't even remember. Uh, there's a jiu-jitsu gym. You're right. And, uh, You're there I, anyways, right? Yes, yeah, so I used to travel with my gi. So uh, as a white belt, blue belt, purple belt, uh, well, not as much as a purple belt because COVID unfortunately happened. Right. Uh, but as a white and blue belt, I travel crazy. So one week a month, I'll be gone. So in a year, I was gone for four months. So that means that every week, I will bring my gi to that city. Uh, and sometime I stay there for two weeks, three weeks, and uh, I will train. And hundred uh, percent, I didn't miss a beat. Uh, I trained at a gym. I'll message them. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm, com- I'm training. I'm coming from Montreal. I'm a white belt, blue belt, whatnot. Mm. And now it's a bit more pressure because I say I'm a brown belt. Right. I walk in, it's like I'm a god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh, what should be? I get the I get the train when yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a brown belt. I get all the top guys running on me. So, but as a white belt, nobody picked you. Huh? So a question. So before even going to the yeah. gym, you said you would call them or email them? Yeah. Or like, how would you do so it? So I had like a whole setup. So when I used to book my hotels, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I used to book my hotel. I Close would... to the gym. <laughs> right, right, right. right. I yeah, would, yeah, my, I did that for my first time. trip. Okay, Chris, you're going to, uh, going to Lubbock, Texas. Right. My first thing that I will do is Google. Where's the gym? Jiu-Jitsu near me. Yeah. <laughs> Where's so the closest hotel closest there? Jiu-Jitsu. Then I'll pick the hotel. Then right. I'll pick, you know, everything will be around it about me going to that gym. So I had a process. I'll, right. I'll find the Jiu-Jitsu at that city. Most of the cities will have, uh, like, I don't know, like two to three gyms. Uh, and you will see which are which are the phony gyms and which are the legit gym. If right. there's a Brazilian guy which is saying boa every time you walk in, <laughs> or whatever, it's a legit gym, you know? Right. So... So I go on Google, look at the picture, look at their website, what's the message, is it very similar to BTT, okay. is it gi, no gi, MMA, or self-defense, and I filter it out, and when I select, I look at the reviews, and I send a message. Uh, so, uh, most of the time, it's either email or on Facebook. Okay. So then, yeah, whatever, like most of the gyms that I've been to, they don't charge. And you, 90% they don't pay they, you a drop-in? No, they don't charge they, you a drop-in? They don't charge, they, that's insane, man. And when they don't pay, and I know they're going through a tough time, as yeah. a gym, you can see it, I will buy a T-shirt or I'll buy okay. something, you know. Yeah. But most of them, they even they, they, they don't charge. And I will um, uh, message. They'll come come in. And back in the days, it was the best because now my travel uh, plans are a bit hectic. But I used to be at the same city for a week, so I will train with these guys for three weeks, uh, three days, three sessions of different mm-hmm. sessions. So you kind of like chill with them after. So I'm not lonely when I go to work. You know, instead of being in a hotel room watching Netflix, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing jujitsu. And you're getting to meet new people, right? Good new yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. My Facebook uh, people that have so many great stories. One of the great stories was like in Richland. So you probably don't know where Richland is. Richland, it's, uh, what? Yeah, it's like in Washington <laughs> State. It's like okay. next to, uh, it's a few, few hours from the, um, for Seattle. Okay. A few hours from Seattle. I, was one of my best experiences. So I, I went there once. And uh, when I was in Richland, I trained with a bunch of guys. I was a blue belt. And I went back to the same customer a year later. But I messaged them. But they remembered me. Because, you know, a brown guy. Uh, yeah. just, there's not many of us. <laughs> so I go back. and It's me, the brown guy. <laughs> <laughs> the only one. <laughs> and it's, it, anyways. Uh, then I, I go there. And um, guess what? It's, um, they remember me. They welcome me open bomb. They don't charge me a penny. I, bought, I have their t-shirt and whatnot. That's cool. And as to this day, I'm still friends with them on Facebook. And it was 4th of July. 
Fourth of July is huge in the States. Right. If you guys don't know. If you go to the States and you want to... Sell, so we end up celebrating. So I was there for a week and a half or whatnot. So the weekend, it's Fourth of July. I go, I get there on Monday. And the Fourth of July was on a Wednesday. So I, there's no work. So I took it off. I went over to all the guys who do jujitsu. We had barbecue. We had fireworks. And I still remember, man. They still mess every Fourth of July. He, uh, his name is Cooper. He still messages me on Facebook. Hey, Chris, are you coming over? Wow, that's man, cool. Like this relationship, man. Do you I know what the name of the gym is? Um, uh, Legacy Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Legacy, but it's a very good gym, uh, very good instructor, he's a Muay Thai guy as well, under, I don't know who they're under, but anyways, overall, all these gyms are great, man, you go to these gyms, that's what I love, so I go to these gyms, I feel a, um, a concept of familiarity, Right. you know what I mean? No matter where you no are. No matter where I go, like mm-hmm. going for, in Singapore is the same thing, you know, in, in uh, Mexico is the same thing, in mm-hmm. Peru is the same thing, every gym that I go to, I feel the concept of familiarity, so if I'm there for a week or two, mm-hmm. instead of like, Exploring, yes, I can go visit the city and uh, go to a bar, but I have that here. Yeah. You know what I mean? By going to Jiu-Jitsu, I mean new culture, new people. Yeah. How is the Jiu-Jitsu in Europe? Oh, it's amazing, man. Like, I've been to Europe several times with my new uh, work schedule, so I, I, I'm in charge of the UK now. And uh, Jiu-Jitsu in Europe, it's amazing. So I got the blessing of rolling with world champion. Like, it's amazing. So you go to this gym, and these are like a uh, guy who just won the gold. Uh, in the uh, IBJJF Worlds in Europe, he's there, picking me. I'm like, damn, like I'm an everyday grappler. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm going with a brown belt, so they fucking pick you. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and um, I roll with them, and they pick me. They beat the shit out of me. Well, it, it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Guy takes my back, man. I fly in the air. Yeah, That's yeah. how well these guys are. You know, there's level to this shit. You know, right. like we're good. At Jiu Jitsu for everyday grapplers. Right. But when we talk there, about. There's another level. There's another Brianna level, you know? Yeah. So. So, how does Europe compare to like the States? Like, can you even do a comparison or is just. Oh, yeah, man. Like, it's. A, it's. A, it's. The level is there, man. Look at the champions coming out of Europe now. Like, you know, ADCC, the girl that beat Brianna. Yeah. Where is she from? Yeah. I went to her gym in Ireland. Hmm. I go on and the first role is with her head instructor. He picks me. He was the suit nicest guy. Hmm. Uh, what's his name? I, I, can't, I can't remember. But Ireland. Uh, uh, Anyways, uh, but he was a super nice guy. He picks me, he lets me train for free, and uh, he won several IBJJ Worlds. Mm-hmm. He picks, that's why Jiu-Jitsu is great, because the guys who are world champion, they're so down to earth, yeah. and they pick you. They yeah. pick you to roll. Like, I'm a, th- I'm a random person out of street. Why does he have to pick me? I understand. On top of that, I still wear the BTT flag. Yeah. I, I wear the BTT key. I walk in with my, I don't, I refuse to wear any, uh, like, the other random gear. Have they ever asked you, has the gym ever asked yes. you to change your gear? Yes, what gym asked me. Oh, I know, what you're going <laughs> to yeah, say. say <laughs> so, no, you can say it, it's the yeah. only one. The only one. It's Gracie Bob, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other it's funny, one? because we've had other people uh, in our gym travel, yeah. and um, it's been the same situation. The yeah. only gym close by was the Gracie Baja, yeah. and... Um, they would make them switch out. They were nice for, people. For no, they, Doesn't mean that they're not nice. Yeah, they have they, a way they, of working. Yeah, and, they're super nice. Yeah, they yeah. even borrow you the gi. Like yeah. I brought my bitch the gi, and it was a black gi. And yeah. they's like, no, we can't let. And you they know. don't charge you for a drop in. Right? They did. They charge you for a drop in. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, they don't charge you for a drop in and make you work. Yeah, but no, but, but nice. it's a different. Um, Again, a whole other conversation, but, but it's, like, a, business, it's a different like, business, business model. For them, yeah, it's a exactly. it's a business model. A lot of these things, if I'm not mistaken, are franchises, exactly. right? Or so. Yeah, it's, it's a different. different. So when you right. go to like a Atos, most of the time, uh, the guys are like, not, like it's not as, you don't feel like it's a franchise. It's yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's, it belongs to that person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah, but yeah. Anyways, I don't know what was the original question now, but Europe. Europe. So yeah, yeah. The, the, I've been tra- I trained at Belgium was super high level. You said you went to Mexico. You trained in Mexico. Yeah, Mexico. Mexico was great as well. I had somebody on, um, um, uh, Caleb Calista, Professor Caleb Calista, yeah. and he had a gym. He has a gym, if I'm not mistaken, still in Mexico or this in, is Mexico. in, in See, Cancun I was, or. Yeah, right. this, I was in Mexico. I was crazy, man. I, I went to like Mexico is crazy. You guys, people don't know when they don't leave Cancun. You don't understand Mexico. You don't understand Mexico. You don't understand Mexico City. So I was in Mexico City. I'm a, I guess because again, I'm gonna bring my color, but I fit in. Right, they thought right. they all speak Spanish to me, you know. Right. But uh, but I took an Uber from a hotel, which was in a nice area, to like the Not nice area. Yeah, yeah. But then you go there, uh, you kind of fit in because I fit in. I don't pop out. As yeah, a, yeah. Even though I'm six, uh, five foot eleven, and they are like five foot four, you know. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I stand up in height, but uh, but uh, I was it was a Renzo Gracie. Okay. It was Renzo Gracie? They had a few gyms. The guy was legit. We did a bit of judo. Was like 
obviously the facility is not the same, right. but uh, the technique but the jiu-jitsu is, is, still the jiu-jitsu is there and it is young blue belt coming up, young white belt coming up and it was a great experience. Hmm. What other uh, places kind of stood out for you when you traveled? Do you have any other? It's like, Malaysia, man. Malaysia. There was a guy that uh, was running it. His name is Bruno. He's, he's, he won several uh, master tournaments. Mm-hmm. He's level, just was high level. He knew Cascan. He's mm-hmm. he from the same city or he trained with Cascan or he competed with Cascan. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, was, I was so surprised. I was so surprised the level of jiu-jitsu uh, that is there. And uh, it's run by guys who understand martial arts. Uh, not only jiu-jitsu, but the whole, like, there's a lot of people in Malaysia and Singapore that come from, like, uh, uh, Dagestan and uh, those Russian area. So they implement a lot of wrestling-based jiu-jitsu, you know. Okay. So those places really stood out because some places you go, you think, okay, I'm going to have the advantage. Mm-hmm. But you go there, like, wow, these guys are high level. You know, there's people high level everywhere, and, that's and you're surprised, right? Because yeah, surprised. you're like in the middle of Malaysia, and yeah. you're like, there's no way there's some high level jiu jitsu yeah, here. Yeah, there is. But there is jiu jitsu. I don't know. Like I've been doing jiu jitsu like in the ten year era, but it has exploded to a level that every gym that I've been to has so many high level guys competing at a high level. Yeah, I think uh, a big difference, or something that's made a big difference in a lot of these remote places that didn't have access to jiu-jitsu, the one thing that they do have access to now because of the internet is all the content on YouTube, all the instructionals. There's literally 100 plus instructionals per technique. Like there's an instructional for everything. Speaking of instructional, now that Brianna is quite famous, Brianna Mm -hmm. Samari, and also Cascao was quite famous as well. I go to the gym. The one guy in Australia, they, they know. he's like, "Oh my God, you play the game like Cascal." Obviously, not the same level. Right, right, right. Like, you're, yeah, you're, you're like, yeah, I do. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm playing my half guard game with the lapel. Yeah, yeah. I saw this in his video. Show me the technique. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, like I, I just, I just joke around with Cascal like in the locker room, you know? Because that's all. They, that's what they're looking at. God, like he's like a god, and the, or the Fabio sequence with the Kimura on the top. You know, like all this is like. Yeah. The people buy it, man, and they watch it, and they like, like when, you know, it's a good exchange of information. Yeah, uh, Gordon Ryan was talking about that. He was saying that that's where uh, the bulk of his revenue is when it comes to instructionals. It's everyone overseas yeah. that has limited access to jiu-jitsu. higher, yeah. higher level yeah. jujitsu. They buy instructionals. They're the ones that want to learn. That's how they're learning all these techniques because wow. they don't have someone coming in. Yeah. To Malaysia, yeah. randomly walking into but Malaysia. But Malaysia is quite big, though. It's not a good right, example. Right, Malaysia right. is a quite big. Australia is quite big. Right. The places that I think that they are remote, like some part of Europe or some part of, uh, uh, I don't know, like even the States, man. States, like, state is huge. Yeah. Like, state, states has so many gyms. Like, it's insane. And every gym, when you go there, it's a blue belt running a class. Yeah. Even in a remote place, yeah. say, you'll still find a, a jiu yeah, gym it's, it's there. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's there. And uh, yeah. there's not a city that I went to that I couldn't find, oh, well, there's one city. There was one city that I couldn't find jujitsu properly. It was somewhere in Denmark, and I swear to God, man, I have, a th- I have a thing. I have a thing. So when I travel, there's three things I have to do. I have to eat butter chicken at, at a restaurant. <laughs> I have to eat a burger. I have to eat a burger. And I have to uh, go to a jujitsu gym. Right, right. It's like a, it's like a to-do. They had everything except for the jujitsu. They didn't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have burger. They didn't have butter chicken. Going on, Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a city like from Copenhagen. It was like a four-hour train ride from Copenhagen. Okay. And uh, Billund, I think it was called Billund, Denmark. Okay. I'm telling you, man, the only jiu-jitsu place was like an hour and a half drive. You know, it was not very convenient. Hmm. But uh, any other than that, jiu-jitsu, it's like a McDonald's. Yeah, I would say that was, that's been my experience too. I don't travel for work anymore, and I used to travel a lot for work. In the States, I never had any issues. Same thing as you, no one charged me for drop-in fees. Um... I would say in Canada, the only time I paid for a drop-in fee, uh, what well, it wasn't a Gracie Baja, it was a gym in Toronto, in Toronto, yeah, Canada. Yeah, Toronto charged me too. Toronto charged. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Toronto BJJ didn't charge me. I'm not thinking this is a different name now. It was in Toronto BJJ. Toronto BJJ. I'm not naming yeah. the gym, but it was a gym in yeah, Toronto. We went to the same gym. Very close. Very close to the airport. Uh, okay, me too. Like <laughs> with 15 minutes from the airport. Back in, it was like seven years ago. It was forty dollars. Yeah, yeah, same. It was. It was about Ooh. five, six years ago, and I would say that really great people, really nice. But sometimes, um, and it, I have to speak for that gym in particular. It's not the jiu-jitsu instructor that's running the gym. They have. It's a random mom and dad who. They have other things going on. They have like a kung fu. They have karate. They have all this stuff. So 
Jiu-Jitsu just so happens to be a great program there, right? Yeah, it's but it's thing. so it's not him charging me; it's yeah. the gym charging it's me, right? So, oh, but yeah, the Brazilians won't charge you most of the time because they want to kick your ass. Yeah, but um, yeah, uh, because yeah, they're like new body coming in. Yeah, come in. I want to see where's my level at. Yeah, know? and I want to see if you're good because they're competitors. Yeah, it's in the freaking blood, man. That's what they want to do. They want to rip your head off. Yeah, and that's what I feel sometimes. Sometimes. When you show the level that is good, you're basically oh, half of that. It's like super nice. They want to be your buddy. Yeah. But the first confrontation is like competition. When it you is. walk through the mat, everybody's looking at you. Yeah. Everybody wants to roll with you. Are you going full on every time you go visit no, a new gym? I don't. I don't even. Try. Most of the time, I, I don't even try to some. Uh, well, when I was a white and blue belt, I made the mistake of trying to fight. And that's when you knew there was going to be a battle, right? With no. Well, you, you, when you're white and blue belt, and when you go to this gym, higher belts don't pick you. Right. You know what I mean? Unless they want to teach you a lesson. Right. But uh, I got picked up, I got rolled to a lot of white and blue belt, and of course, white and blue belts were rolling. No like matter where you are, it's the same yeah, shit. Yeah. But when you got purple belt and up, the rolls now, it's on respect. So you roll, you put the energy, and it's very technical roll. Yeah. And you're not going to roll like a maniac. We, we both know when we, we there's, put, there's ways what of happens? rolling when you yeah. go. It's, it's like anything in house. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guest at your house. Yeah. I'm going to respect you. Yeah. And you're going to respect me because you invited me as a guest. Yeah. I'm not going to be an asshole and be a douchebag about it, uh, the way I roll. Yeah. You know, if I, you do, then there's consequences, right? And also, yeah. and I'm also, I'm, I'm repping Fabio, I'm repping Fred, I'm yeah. repping you guys when I travel. You know, I'm not the high level competition competitor that uh, that like Brianna is, but I'm wearing the BTT flag. So yeah. if I uh, train like an asshole, you guys look bad. You yeah. know, so I have to be conscious of that. Yeah, yeah. I would say that uh, that comes uh, probably later on too, right? The whole idea of I'm I'm part of a club but also like a bigger picture. So mm -hmm. if I do travel and I do go somewhere, it's not just me being a jerk. It's yeah. they're going to have a perception of me when I leave. And it's, it, it won't even be me. It's going to yeah. be the fact that my gi says this, they're going to assume that all these because guys are guys the same are way, right? Like, you know, like, Which is not what you want. Like, yeah, of course not. And and most of the time, like uh, most of the time, I end up adding some person from uh, that I meet uh, on Instagram or on Facebook and uh, I stay in touch with them, you know, it's, it's a great way of networking. And uh, what ends up happening is like, uh, it's funny enough, like, we, I post something, they comment on it, I get my brown belt, they oh, my congrats, Chris, we're so happy for you, yeah. we can't wait for you to come back to Ireland or Australia. Mm. So I I'm, I'm, it's just meet great people everywhere, man. And, and you realize how we're so connected, we're so all connected with the same martial art, mm -hmm. and it's insane. And then and anywhere you go in the world, this is what you realize, the connect, the, like, I can have, uh, I can have a great conversation with the guy that I just met and go on a go to his house that I, I don't even know. He might shoot me in the fucking yeah. backyard on <laughs> Fourth of July, and uh, we just can connect on jujitsu. Yeah. And uh, you feel like you, you it's possible to get that from any other sport or anything else, or because again mm -hmm. you have like question. it's That's funny it. because the the. I want to say intimacy, but the like the the close knit connection but this because is it's two bodies trying to strangle each other and kill each other is a little different than if you were traveling and you were a yeah, Muay Thai fighter or a, or a baseball player or someone who's different. good at basketball. Or, you know why it's different. You know why it's different. I think I, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast or Joe Rogan video on Instagram. Basketball, soccer, anything they don't fight. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh my god, I did a dunk on you. I'm a better basketball player than you. Right, but Ray, if you beat the shit out of me in jiu jitsu, I can't say shit to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I had a ba you know what I mean. Like, oh, I remember this conversation. You know what I yeah, mean. So yeah, yeah. You cannot be um, after after like in Muay Thai or boxing. Again, I'm not a high level boxer, but let's say I landed that punch on you. You know, you're a better striker than me, but I landed that punch on you. I got the best of you in that aspect. Yeah. But in jiu jitsu, if you roll for seven minutes or six minutes, you beat the shit out of me for six seven minutes. I, I all I have to do is put my ego out of the out of the door, and walk my head down and respect the guy that beat the shit out of me for seven. Yeah. I can't do anything. You can't that. do that with any so, other sports. So, yeah, yeah. so that creates a level of connection that I don't think any other sports can do if they if they go. I cannot go play soccer in another country and have that relationship because the guy for him to respect my game, he has to see me play soccer for like two years or three years, but. This guy has to only roll with me for seven minutes. Know that I'm better than him. Either mm -hmm. he can learn from me, yeah. or, or or let his ego involve. Learn mm -hmm. from me from that specific technique that I have, or I learned from my. Or respect you because he dominated you for seven minutes. Oh, he respects right? me because he I, I I lost seven minutes. Yeah. So it's a win win no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any other martial arts that allows you to have this 
connection. Then you guys bond on the same fucking uh, Don Donner video. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you talk about it. Um, Gordon Ryan is the Which I've never bought one, by the way. <laughs> Not that I buy them or, or get them illegally <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. I just refuse to drop like 200 bucks on oh, the bucks. I don't know. I, I the last time I looked up an instruction, it's got to be maybe when I was like a purple belt. But I got I so I could I can tell you the last one I bought, yeah. uh, like actually paid for was the um, the was the lapel man. It's like six six DVDs. Oh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Keenan. Keenan's oh, yeah. lapel. So good. Yeah, yeah. Keenan's that lapel. I was like super interested. I was like, I'm going to invest money in this because that's what I enjoy doing. But yeah. apart from that, I've never, uh, I, I, I haven't bought another instructional. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I can't sit down and watch it. That's my problem. The attention? Yeah, I can watch a video of like Gordon or whatever. A uh, couple Craig, minutes. You know, I love Craig Jones now. Like, I love his YouTube videos. Like, yeah, I the B watch, team. Yeah, I watch oh, all of them. It's, it's Jones, super entertaining. Craig materials are yeah. amazing. Yeah, like, I'm like, this guy is killing it. In, 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 term, in terms of content putting out there, yeah. he's hilarious. I find him hilarious and yeah. he pokes at everybody, makes it makes fun of everybody equally. Mm-hmm. So, so I love to watch some content that he will put out, but I, I would like to get into right away. I, I can't sit down in the video to get to a position, you know? Yeah. Like I, he shows a position. I'm okay. I'm happy. I got, I got what I needed to do. Yeah. Crazy juice is pretty shit too. So I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said his juice is pretty shit, but oh, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> only, yeah, the second best is just a practitioner in the world. Yeah, I know that yeah, that stuff is good. Yeah. I, I, I do the same thing. A couple of minutes, I'm good. Even though I was talking about this on Monday night's class with a few people, I actually watched, like I dedicated myself to watch like some, the open division pans. Yeah. Um, I was really interested in that. Um, I watched the, um, uh, Eddie Bravo stuff on Saturday yeah. night and Sunday night, the uh, yeah. combat yeah. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Like I watched that. I just found it super interesting. And it's funny out of that, I got, you know, a new technique that, uh, Black Belt ended up showing me a video of. I was like, oh yeah, I saw that last night. It was just kind of like looking at trendy stuff and like what's coming out. And like, I was watching this 19 year old Black Belt just dominate everybody. So and I'm like, this is the future the of this year, right? Yeah, like I roll, with, I roll with young guys from different gyms when I could travel. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, like this guy is only a blue belt, 17, and he's kicking, almost kicking my ass. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's great to see, but, but I cannot, but I, like, except if like somebody I know like Brianna or Cascon, I cannot get excited for jiu-jitsu. That's I don't know if to I, sit to sit down and like say I'm watching like, this for three like, hours. Yeah, or... yes, of course. If like uh, one of the big names are fighting, I'll watch uh, the Roto Brothers or Andrew right. Matos or uh, B Team or whatnot. I'll watch, mm-hmm. but uh, to you like UFC for example, I will be able to watch uh, let's say a card, but jiu-jitsu I can't. I don't okay. know, man. I don't know how people do it. It's funny because you're someone who is. You know, like we have our, our sequence at Jiu-Jitsu and you, you're someone who mm-hmm. prides himself on knowing well, everything when it comes to the yeah, sequence and yeah, you're very technical and if you if someone comes and asks you a question, you want to be able yeah. to answer it. You've yeah, always had that mentality. And even me, if I'll forget something, yeah. I don't t- typically go to anybody else. Yeah. I know if you're there, yeah. I'll get the right yeah. answer from you. It's funny, someone who's very technical and wants to know everything doesn't you know, at home, sit and watch yeah, a lot of stuff. But it's, right? but, it's the BTT system. Right. Like, this is a system that, by the way, I didn't go to a gym that has a system yet. I want to talk to you about Not that. One gym. No curriculums. Like, they might have a curriculum that exists online. But you didn't see it. But it's not the curriculum that I forget about the curriculum. You know what the BTT system is good at, mm-hmm. in my opinion? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the fact of creating a teacher out of each one of us. Right. So by default, as a white belt, you're a teacher. Yeah. No? Like, yes, you're not the best teacher, but you know what you're learning as a jiu-jitsu practitioner at BCT? You're mm-hmm. becoming a, a t- black belt t- a teacher. Yeah. There's a lot of black belts out there. They don't know what the fuck they're saying because they're, not, they're never taught. They're really good at jiu-jitsu. They're amazing. They win tournaments, but yeah. put them teaching. Teaching is an art, you yeah. know? Uh, relaying that information to someone for them to understand is an art. And at BTT, we create black belts. Right? Yeah. You know, because you start teaching at white belt. You know, the way Fabio has it. Put up his curriculum is that white belts blue belts teach so when i started jiu-jitsu i had the best black belts teaching at that time at btt teaching me white belt technique yeah so i had a structure on it you know yeah. then you become then you have this fundamental class with fred mark yelling at you under her cross face then then rolling with you guys uh, picking up things oh i should do this then right away fred corrects something that you don't do right or wrong 
So you're able to pick it up if you're consistent. Yeah. You, and and I love teaching. And I love teaching. Of course, with my job, I I don't get the, the chance to do it as much as I would love to do it. Yeah. But I love teaching, and it's it's in my inner. It's in, in me to be able to want to do that naturally. You know, like yeah. I want to give my knowledge. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, it's you know a lot of people will get a blue belt. And then they'll be like, oh, I can't wait until I get my blue belt because then I get to learn the blue belt sequence. Yeah, yeah. But in reality, you get to blue belt and all you're belts. doing is teaching white belts, yeah. right? And it's the same thing. You yeah. get to purple, you're like, thank so, God, I'm done with this blue belt sequence. Yeah. I want to I want to do purple and yeah. you're just teaching blue belts. Yeah, but they forget about that they're becoming a good teacher. And this yeah, is good exactly. in life. Like yeah. when you look at the BT sequence, it's a good way for you to... Uh, you forget about it if you do it just three times a week and you do the, the BT sequence and the curriculum. You are naturally becoming a good teacher. Yeah. And that's uh, not a lot of gyms allow you to do that. Yeah. No? And yeah. we take it for granted at BTT. I think we do. Or yeah. we assume that a lot of other gyms do it. But if you do travel and you go elsewhere, they just don't they do don't. it. They don't. A lot of the other schools have teachers and students. We have teachers. And teachers. Teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about your hobbies. Because outside of Jiu-Jitsu, you have a lot of other hobbies. You're yeah. exactly like me in that mm-hmm. in that manner. Jiu-Jitsu is really important. It's dear, yeah. dear to our hearts, but it's important to also have other, mm. or it's nice to have other hobbies that mm. might even complement Jiu-Jitsu. So I know you like weightlifting, right? How many times a week are you going to the gym? Though? So I uh, used to do a lot more, but now it's six to two to three times a week. That's what my life schedule and also my Jiu-Jitsu schedule will allow me to. Because now I'm in a period where I couldn't train as much as twice a week, uh, twice a day, sorry. Yeah. I can do it twice a day because before I will do jujitsu and weightlifting without a problem. Like I'll have the energy to do it, yeah. and it's sometimes back to back. But now I have to give a little, a little break, a little break, like in the day. So, yeah. but I could do twice a day jujitsu uh, because I'm able to manage my roles, like we talked about earlier, right. and also my level of jujitsu is good enough to manage a lot of higher belts and whatnot. Uh, but uh, but I tend to do two to three times a week uh, weightlifting. Uh, is it heavy heavy lifting? No, it's very structured towards uh, jiu jitsu. So mm-hmm. a lot of like uh, push and pull motions. I'm not a, again. I'm not a weightlifter or any trainer. What say? So it works for me. So I do it. So if right. you can, if people can learn from it. Great. But you guys see me posting on Instagram. It's a lot of push pull. A lot of thing that uh, revolves around grips. A lot of thing that revolves around core. So I want to. I like jiu jitsu. Requires a lot of core core strength. A lot of grip strength. Do you do any calisthenics like chin ups and stuff like yeah, that? Well, yeah, I, I stick to pull ups. But yeah. I listened to a very good podcast from Huberman Lab. I don't know if you heard of him. Huberman Lab. I, yeah, I listen yeah. to everything. <laughs> He's amazing. But there was a yeah, part of my life where I just dived into the rabbit hole and I was listening. Yeah, you're. Yeah, yeah. I'm sick of him, but like yeah, yeah. I listened to his show and one guy came on it, and he was telling how uh, your body has to experience a lot of uh, like breaks. So uh, that means that your workout has to be structured around it. So yes, going to do bicep curls will be nice to look in front of the mirrors and for your Instagram or whatnot, mm-hmm. but it does not really build your bone structure or your muscle structure or whatnot. It's doing yeah. different things, right? Yeah. So he said like things that you have to do is like hanging pool, like hanging for like a minute, uh, deadlift, mm-hmm. uh, any, uh, squats, anything that, and, uh, like anything that requires push, pull, and motions of like your full body being worked out yeah. is the workouts that you're going to do because you don't have a lot of time. Like I don't have time right now to go do bicep triceps. I'm not trying to look like a bodybuilder. You right. know? So I have to go to the gym. I have to get, first of all, a good cardiovascular workout. Second of all, uh, do the right things that will allow me to do better at jiu-jitsu and mm-hmm. recuperate because I, I believe that any jiu-jitsu practice should maintain as healthy uh, weightlifting uh, lifestyle mm-hmm. uh, in terms of workout because that allows you to recuperate and yeah. and and uh, be stronger in position. Because if not, you'll get to jiu jitsu and you're just going to be wrecked and, and you're not going yeah. to get injured. Yeah. So then I I combine that with again from Huberman Lab uh, a sauna session, cold cold hot therapy, water and uh, in the mist room. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's kind of my schedule in a week. So like five, four to five, six sometimes if I can fit in jiu jitsu and. Um, Two or three times a week of weightlifting. You dance too. Yeah, and I dance too. Yeah, well, it's, la- it's Latin dancing, Latin right? Dance, yeah, yeah. My my, 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 my wife's forcing <laughs> my wife's forcing me to ask you this question, by the way. Oh, yeah, and I think yeah, she's great. making me ask you this question because she wants me to do it. Her being from Argentina yeah, and amazing. loving to dance. But yeah. well, what what got you into that? Well, man, I always went like you know a lot of all my just boys and I jump on me. But anyways, yeah. I, it's very public. I put it on. Yeah, yeah. So well, 
I don't know. I find like jujitsu is a very, a very uh, in, in life everything is a equilibrium in French, like we say. A balance. A balance. Right. Okay, you cannot do too many manly things, caveman shit. Right. Know? So like, I have to develop my artistic side. Right. You know, like yeah, yeah. Uh, and and we neglect that. You play the guitar. I see guitar. Yeah, yeah. That's not. I I couldn't play the guitar because I don't have the patience to sit on a chair and learn the right. music. You're very good at that. Yeah, but you want to move. I want to move, I want to get an exercise workout, and I love people. I'm an extrovert, and I get energy from t- talking to people. Right. So I now was going to the dance, and what better than great music? Latin music is amazing. And the ladies. And the ladies, right? Yeah. So <laughs> so Latin music is amazing, and um, uh, you meet new people. And uh, How long have you been doing this for? I just started recently, like okay. a, a year now. Okay. A year now. But it was when COVID was done. I wanted to do it for a while. Uh, COVID was done, and you know, I wanted something fresh. And jiu-jitsu, we, I barely stopped jiu-jitsu during COVID, you guys. Yeah, Anyways, yeah, yeah. let's not get into that. <laughs> so I, I actually worked out more in COVID. And um, uh, so I wanted to do something fresh. And I, for my mind, something different, you know, like to give me that, uh, like an energy back. And uh, dance was a good way of expressing my artistic side. Did you have a friend that was already doing no. it? That well, I saw a guy uh, that I used to work with. Uh, he posted something online and I'm like, fuck, this guy looks so good, you know? Okay. And he's really, really good. And I'm like, no, I want to do this. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go. I signed up. I'm, everything in my life is like that. I want to do it, I do it. Spontaneous. No, not spontaneous. No, no. I do it. But just if you decide on something, that's it. what you're doing. So I did it. Uh, I don't do it as much as I can because it's in downtown. It's not convenient as much. So when the summer comes, it's going to be convenient because I can take my motorcycle. Okay. But uh, but yeah, so then, um, yes, and I got into it. It was super fun. Met so many great people different mindset man it's like that's important because you live in a circle of life of people yeah that you have the same mindset now it's true. and when jujitsu is the only thing that you see you you don't want to become that person that yeah. has the, the mindset of that sees like this you yeah know? so i want to be able to see like this you know so that's the idea so now i'm going to go to a different circle of people that view life differently mm. that doesn't mean they're right you know it's just your experience it's just a new experience right it's a new experience right. and allow me to meet great people and allow me to explore a different side of me and I'm, let me tell you that people are more excited that you dance than you do jiu-jitsu that's true <laughs> jiu-jitsu is not very it's not, it's not something that you know yeah uh, uh, and then you spend an hour trying to explain what yeah, jiu-jitsu like, is, right? This guy's a brown belt or, or black belt in jiu-jitsu. What does that even mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think they're a karate movie, you know? Like, yeah, you don't have to beat people. You don't understand what I can do to you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But versus that, yeah. I just moved two, three moves. And oh, I'm my like, God. Oh, I, my God, Chris. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, and they like, recognize that. But it's like this. Yeah. Any part of you go. I don't, I don't want to be that guy in the corner of the bar. Just bombing his beer. Yeah. <laughs> That was the reason why I got it. Okay. Do you do any any other hobbies outside of snowboarding? That? Oh, I mean, snowboard is true. So, yeah. yeah, we do. You also do snowboarding. Yeah. I used to do a lot more hobbies like golf, uh, soccer, a lot. I, I remember when I first met you, you were really into golf. I think you would go to the driving range. Yeah, I was super into golf, man. Golf, yeah. t- golf took over my life. Like it was like just like I used to do every weekend golf. Okay. Then I stopped because it's too expensive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a white people sport, you know? White yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, if you're going to spend money anywhere, right? And it was like 40 bucks every time. And most of the time, how many guys do you know play golf? I don't know any of them play golf, yeah. actually. So, like, you go with random guys who are retired or 55. You go at 3 p.m. on a Saturday because you want to save money. You want to play nine hole. Right. And the guy is like, I don't know, divorced. And like, like you don't even know him. <laughs> so you're like there playing golf. And the connection is different. It's again, different, right? You don't even relate to that guy. Like he's like multimillionaire or whatnot. Or he's like a retiree. It doesn't make sense. You know? yeah. So I, first of all, I couldn't connect. But jujitsu is different, you know. It's a, yeah. Kind of a different level. Another uh, discussion that we had recently, which I ask everybody who's on here about supplementation and this and that, you were telling me that you don't do... That's it. You don't do any of this. I don't do anything, man. It's crazy. Maybe it's my I, genetics. I, I don't understand. It's, it's got to be genetics. It's, no, got, but, it's funny. I just had... I did a podcast with uh, another one of our, our, our guys, uh, Onig, and he... I, I can't believe this. This guy is two years older than me, so he's 45, if I'm not mistaken. He... Doesn't have breakfast. I don't have breakfast. Has coffee. Yeah. Doesn't eat lunch. <laughs> yeah, then it gets rough. Doesn't eat lunch, and at supper time, he'll have a wrap with cheese. Jesus Christ. That is his all week. Yeah, but we're a society. And he, he, he trains like five times five a times a week, yeah, he right? Now, yeah. Five times a week, he's 45, yeah. barely eats, and this guy, what he was explaining to me, 
he was saying, like most of us say, he's not going all in in every single role all the but time, training, which man. is, but he's still training. Yeah. And it's, I asked this question, I'm so curious about people's eating habits and That's supplements. That's so interesting. That's so, as a, well, actually. He's my, 20 years older than you. Yeah, but, but my, my uh, it's, it's, it's weird, right? So I used to be a guy that ate a lot. Like I, I ate a lot as like, I would eat five meals a day. So this was in my That's mid, what I'm doing now, mid basically. 20s, was mid 20s, okay? So then, uh, the only supplements that I ever took and I stopped taking recently uh, was I used to take protein, normal whey protein, okay. normal whey protein, never mass gainer. Okay. I was always against even taking protein in terms of like, I didn't like the, what you did to my stomach. Okay. So then uh, I stopped taking protein. I stopped, I just eat oh, good food, uh, uh, balanced food, I like to say. And I don't have a strict diet either. I like to eat my, like last night I had pizza, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, la pasta. So, I just, depending on what I eat and I see my weight fluctuation and whatnot. And how you feel afterwards. How I feel like whatever. I adapt the day after. So today, like for today, I knew that I was coming to your podcast. Normally, I don't have a breakfast. So today, but I, again, keep me on that. I gave myself two hours. I woke up. Uh, I Two hours, I didn't eat. I ate at um, 1030, uh, an hour and a half before the training. But I know we start rolling at 1 p.m. So I don't, that means that, you know, I don't need to, uh, I, it will give my body enough time to digest. Okay. So I understand my body quite well. So then I'm, okay, I, I, I had two eggs, a peanut butter, uh, some, uh, a, peanut, a toast with peanut butter, and uh, a mango, and a few dates. Hmm. Okay, that was my, so I didn't eat yet after the training. I trained and finished training at 1.30, I didn't eat yet. And now I'm going to go and have uh, probably dinner around 5 p.m. And that's going to be it. I'm not going to eat anything else after that. Okay. So I listen to my stomach. I listen to my appetite. I think we live in a society where we are a consumer of food. Mm -hmm. We eat a lot that we shouldn't be eating. We eat more than we should. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because we, ex I mean, again, I'm not a scientist, but this my body works for me. Mm -hmm. So when I start intermittent fasting, uh, when intermittent fasting was exciting, everybody Great. was doing it. Uh, I was doing it until I got my, I was went on probiotic, antibiotics for because I had a surgery in my, uh, my gum. Before that, I was doing it, was losing, looked amazing, trained. I could not believe that I could train without eating, you know? So, but I ended up doing, all I had is a coffee all day. I would yeah. train until like 2.30 and I will go eat. You know what I mean? Sorry, 1.30. So my diet is very adapted to my body and I listen to my body. I see if I'm gaining weight. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I have nothing. I never talk to a nutritionist. Hmm. Uh, so I do what is great for me. So I, that's why I think it's important as a everyday grappler or whatnot. You want to be, be able to, you listen to your body and you do what is good for you. That's why I don't think there's a diet for anybody or there's a way of eating for everybody. Everybody has their own way their body works yeah. and everybody has their own gut and you have to understand your body and listen to it and, not, and experiment. You know, you have to experiment with different food, mm -hmm. what works for you, what not works for you. Big Macs every day. Some people might work. <laughs> that, that I think. <laughs> no. No. Anyways, I that answer. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, no, because I always ask people about nutrition and and supplementation. And I take supplements curious. as like I take vitamins, uh, D three, right. uh, omega three, all that stuff that Huberman Lab says. Right. I take all of them. I've been taking them for years, but nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing like I don't. I never took creatine. Never took. Um, I don't even know the names. BCAs. Yeah. Like, I don't. I never took anything like. I that. I think you'd be a very scary man on creatine. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, like, I, I think I stick to ten push, hundred push ups, hundred squats, and hundred steps. <laughs> uh, give everybody uh, uh, a shout out for um, your social media and your Instagram well, and all that stuff. Is, well, my Instagram is Chris P. G. Right, and I have I tried to create a new Instagram for Chris Travels, but yeah. it's mainly for work. Uh, so that's basically for me to educate my. Uh, People who are not out inside jujitsu or people who are um, uh, doing engineering related work about the advantage of solutions we sell. Nice. So it's oriented towards it's more of an education because I get to travel with my CEO a lot, yeah. and um, you know, he's seventy three. So yeah. that's a good experience for other people at work to get. Uh, oh, this is what we do at the company. But mm. hopefully, I start putting stuff about jujitsu because you should do a separate channel, like specific to traveling and jujitsu. I think there'd be a big interest there. Just yeah, because I, th I thought about it. Like maybe I should just like sit down with the guy who who lets me train for free for like five minutes. Like, hey, tell me about your journey. Just a quick conversation. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like very live, nothing edited. You yeah, know? yeah. I want to be a, maybe. I will see. We'll see how things develop. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot. It was Thank a good you. time. 
You've been listening to Let's Talk Jiu Jitsu with Raymond Terrence. Go follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. Turn on notifications and press that like button. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the mats.